<laughs> hey, how's it going? Tim Brown and Josh. Josh Swisher from North Face Construction. We're talking about economic uncertainty, and I thought that what Josh had to say was a fairly valuable mindset. So I wanted to share a little bit about that. And, like, obviously, uh, let some people get on here a little bit, but we're going to talk about that as we go over the Stone Arch Bridge for a little bit here in Minneapolis, which it should be a beautiful background. Yeah. Stay for time. the background. Yeah, stay for the background and your mullet. And, and, the, and the mullet. I think I can get a <laughs> side view there with this crazy ass. You need to shave it. Selfie stick. Um, comment below if I should shave the mullet uh, or if I should keep growing it out. No, you should keep growing it out. All right. Full, full scent. So... Josh, you and I are not immune to our uh, anxiety around economic situations, but I, I feel like you're a little bit more confident than me. Um, I just, for me, I mean, I started my, I started in this industry during a recession, and that's how I scrapped my way into it. Was Craigslisting and doing hundred dollar repairs, so I'm not afraid of a little bit of a downturn. Yeah. I think that's like the ultimate. I know how bad it can get and we're nowhere close to that, so I'm not really scared. There's plenty of work, there's plenty of stuff to be done. Um, so first of all, let's get it straight. Are we in a recession or not? I don't think so. You don't and think so? I don't know, man. I don't follow any of that stuff. I just you know that I know. You almost think of political. What's that? You almost think of that as, you almost said politics. I was almost gonna say that, and I don't get into that shit. No, but I think it, I think it is interesting sometimes, like when a conservative is president, like the, the Democratic people, the liberal Excuse people, me. like think everything's going to hell, mm -hmm. and then when it's a, a Democrat in office or whatever, you know, then yeah. all the conservative there's always, people. There's like, always a narrative going yeah. on one way or the other, depending on what you're ingesting, and I just choose not to ingest most of the stuff. Yeah, I think it's just being a realist on what's out there. There are pe there are homes, and there's people that have problems, and they're going to still be, have those problems. So I think just figuring out and adjusting um, how to speak to them and answer their questions and meet their needs, which will be different if they're feeling the anxiety. And see, that's the manifestation of this, is if they're feeling that way, they're going to make decisions that way. Exactly. So you need to think that way, in a sense, so you need to be conscious of what it is, yeah. but that doesn't mean it's actually happening. You yeah. know, um, you can borrow money, you can get stuff. I mean, yeah, interest rates are high, but over the last 40 year average, like 12% interest was normal for our parents, right? We're yeah. not there. Um, and that's actually average the last 40, 50 years. So 12%? I think it's roughly that. Look it up. I could be wrong. I've heard that. I've re I'm regurgitating information. So like our, our 2% was just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Actually. That's free money. Um, and I hopefully took advantage of it when it was here. Um, that's not coming back ever again, I don't think. But yeah. I think as a service business owner, speaking to your audience and knowing where they're shopping and maybe changing who your client is too, right? Um, you can think about different ways to approach that mindset. Because some people don't subscribe to it and are operating in a different world. They buy on value, no matter if it's economic or not, because their time is best well spent making their own money and focusing on that rather than saving a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, but. I think there's also things operationally that a business owner can do, and one of the things that we've strategically done over the years is, for most of the operational and internal overhead positions and direct cost of goods sold, cost of goods served, the cost of goods sold, cogs, uh, on into in internal labor employees, is we are always trying to find people that have hands-on skills that can actually do the work. Yeah. So for me. If there was economic downturn, I can deploy my internal production and operations people out in the field. And you also said you do training to try to get actual hands-on skills. Yes. For people like you're saying, like repairs and stuff yep. like that, or well, and even swapping out to a crew, like yeah. I mean, say say what you mean by swapping out to a crew. Like uh, say say you have who, who would be involved, like a. Like your service repair guys? Or, or yeah, we have yeah. Uh, four or five field techs. Plus, I mean, if it really got really low, I mean, we got people that are in the office that we just deploy out in the field if needed. I wouldn't do that immediately by any means. But 
we could take our people from running the repairs and doing the auxiliary things, ixnay one, one crew off of siding or windows, and that whole cost of those employees is right there, which was already getting paid out anyways, which then we're also potentially getting an additional net on. So having that extra room. I don't like being a paper contractor. Most people in our industry are still paper contractors. They're just flipping subs and this, that, the other thing. So when it comes down to it and there's no money on top of the subs, what do you do? If you don't know how to swing a hammer and get the shit done, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've helped us re-roof a house. Yeah. I mean, I'm ready <laughs> if I have to. Yeah, let's go. It's, it's fun. It's fun work. It gives you value. It gives you self-satisfaction of building real things. And it actually is a good training mechanism for salespeople. And it, get, it makes these employees indispensable and valued in your organization in a way that they wouldn't be somewhere else. I agree 100%. Well, I think that one of the other things that I like to think about during this time is like, we. so we have different kinds of clients, right? We have some people that are in the two million to three, four million range and we've got people that like yourself are going, you know, past ten. Or, you know, you're you're doing, you know, seven plus or you know, that that range, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. so one thing that I see is a little bit of a difference too is like some of the real small guys might get picked up a little bit during let's say that there's economic uncertainty. You know what I'm saying? Like if something if stuff gets hit. Yeah, there's a little stability in joining forces. So there's nothing wrong with that. And that's happening right now on the higher level with the one million plus EBITDA companies. Well, if stuff goes down, then the people that are sub that, it might be an option or something that they want to do is to get absorbed and join forces with other companies around that range. And you can combine forces and grow together. Yeah, and I think like I wanted to talk real briefly about belief. And I don't know if you actually like subscribe to what I I think about on this, so I'm not gonna say it like you think it. You can disagree with me if you'd like. But like I think that in these times, one important belief that I have is that usually if things like this go down, that there's opportunity. And I, I think you believe that. But I think also like the way what we believe matters a lot. Yeah. As far as like, because if you believe, for instance, that customers don't have money and always want the cheapest thing, there's a lot of like beliefs around purchasing. Yeah. And like, I'm not a sales guru, but I know that to assume that about your customer, they'll often play in what you believe. Yep. And I, like, I think in times like this, that can affect our sales force's ability to sell well yeah. when we all think this economic uncertainty is this, this it's a giant boogeyman that can actually have real consequences potentially. Yeah, and I, th I think if I'm hearing what you're saying properly, and I think that is ap applicable in some situations, absolutely. I mean, you think about the scenario where you need to treat your customer's self, self worth and respect that they have that even if things aren't that great for them it's not your freaking problem it's not your it's, you shouldn't be placing that on them because that's demeaning to them in and of itself mm -hmm. and that erodes self-confidence and if you're doing that psychologically with your customer even unintentionally and assuming they can't afford it see they live here they live that you are 100 percent shooting yourself in the foot because you will be surprised at yeah. the lengths people will go when they value quality and they value service to make that shit happen and, and purchase I mean, high value things. I mean, there's a reason that people buy pain. nice shit. Yeah, it's also to avoid pain, right? They've had yep. enough bad yep. home service business experiences or contractors in yep. the past. Well, and it's quality doesn't yeah. cost, it pays. Yeah. And when you've been through the ringer of life as a homeowner n numerous times um, and learned that lesson hard enough, you realize that peace of mind and quality pay you back in dividends long term um, because your time is more becomes more important whether or not you have if your net worth is high or low it still is valuable absolutely so I'm gonna do a little mini tour for those that aren't in Minneapolis of this, yep. of this spot here just a little we can talk to this if we want but we got the gold metal flower North Star 
Blankets Company. There's this art. Uh, is that a theater? It's like the Minnesota. That's the Guthrie. The Guthrie Theater. In the Endless Bridge. Yeah. What did, well, I don't know what the end Well, you can't is. see. So where, where those people are standing right there, that's what they call the Endless Bridge because it's cantilevered out. Yeah. And then that yellow part on the building has a glass floor. You can go up to the seventh floor and stand there and over glass. It's pretty cool. I've gone to a couple plays. Yeah. It's a good thing to do if you want to take your wife on a nice date. Take her to a play at the Guthrie. Smart. Then you're fancy, fancy. That's like fancy it. for a roofer. I like that. <laughs> no, that is fancy for me, too. So this used to be, what is this? It's rock. Flour, flour mill. Flour mill, so the water. And then there's, like, these old caves over here. Well, and another thing is the 35W bridge that collapsed. I don't is that it? Where. Yeah, right over there. That's the one That's, that collapsed. Really? Yeah. Well, they rebuilt it, obviously, but yeah, I don't remember what year that happened. Feels like, feels like five years ago, but I'm no. sure it was more like 13. It was, something. yeah, it was like 13. So then, I'm just gonna real quick show you the. We got on this side of the river. We got the Pillsbury Flower. There's a bunch of artist lofts over here. Is the Grain Belt sign back there? The Grain Belt sign over uh, there. You can't I don't see think it, you can but... see it, but I'm just gonna go look at the. the Do band. they sell Grain Belt in other parts of the country? I don't know. Somebody answer that if you're if you're hearing this. Grain Belt beer. Do they sell it in other parts of this uh, country, or is it just I think the it's Midwest? A, I think it's the Midwest then. All right. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's crazy how like wavy it gets out here when it's super windy. It's not windy today. It's just like 90 degrees, and I made. Josh, take a walk with me. Good thing I had shorts in the truck. Yeah. I got to change in my underwear in a parking lot. On this trip. <laughs> um, so belief. And like, I really believe belief is a big difference, like for our leaders and our people. Like if people really believe in the company and like you and, you and I were talking about this because like, it's so important for your people to trust that service and your crews are doing a good job. Like that's such an important oh, yeah. part. And like Absolutely. you want to make sure that's part of it. And then the other thing I think about a lot is winning energy. And it goes along <laughs> with belief. Yeah. There's ah. nothing bigger than momentum. Yeah. You know, you get that momentum rolling and you just keep it going. It's not going to be perfect, but you can like with momentum and winning energy, yeah. you can just, you can do a lot, man. Uh, and the belief in the process, belief in the teammates, and that's where like cultural integration and just being cognizant of the small wins of everyone mm -hmm. and displaying those and sharing those with people, um, I think is exceedingly important because then it also as a leader, you're recognizing and appreciating the small wins that they're doing, their mm -hmm. accomplishments, and they need to be recognized for those. Even if you accomplished those things yourself 10 years ago, um, that doesn't matter, it's still an accomplishment. And it gives, like I'm saying, like more belief in your people because you see they're improving and the more you focus on their improvements and their little wins, the more confidence you have in them. The more confidence you have in them, the more self-confident they're gonna be. And you can start creating that just compounding effect. I mean, we're not Encourage perfect. Encouragement is a muscle though, too. Like, right? It is, you gotta work it. I'm not the best, I'm not the best. I've made a lot of mistakes and uh, I fail. I will Quite say that, that that's like one of my strengths, I think, as a leader, is I really like encouraging people because mm -hmm. my love language is is words of encouragement. Yep. And so that's how I do it for everyone, even if that's not their love language, because my <laughs> wife's is like acts of service, and I'm just over here trying to give her compliments, and she's like, yeah, help. <laughs> you know, but nonetheless, I like to give compliments, I like to encourage, and so that is a strength sometimes. It is a yeah. muscle that you can work on it as is. a leader. It is, and like for me, I have trouble and what I've recognized and been told and I've had to confront and continually need to work on is, you know, as a leader in the company, you want to reach goals. Um, <clears throat> and once you reach the goals, you got to celebrate them instead of just, you know, like a guy like you and me, you get it done, what next? Yeah. What the fuck next? Well, what that does is it ostracizes and excludes people and almost makes them feel like what we just accomplished was not, you don't even give a fuck. Mm -hmm. even if it was really amazing. And I've made that mistake many times over of just, all right, we did it next. Because in my mind, I see 
mm -hmm. the 10 steps ahead because you're supposed to be a visionary and seeing the five, 10 year vision. And if you're focused on that, you can be sometimes too focused to turn around and recognize the people that are actually gonna get you there. Mm -hmm. It's beautifully said. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that your belief is you're thinking about it. You're thinking about what do I believe that's affecting my actions right now? What are what are my beliefs about this economy? What are my beliefs about the way people purchase? Yeah. Um, and, and working on the trying to figure out if a different set of beliefs might serve you better. Yeah. All right, y'all. See you guys later.